Hey there Capricorn, welcome back to my channel. If you enjoy my readings, please be sure to like and subscribe, as well as give me a comment and let me know if this reading resonates with you. Alright, so basically um, I got a couple new decks. We got the Archangel Fire Oracle, which is um, Archangel cards. They have beautiful pictures. If you would like to look at all of these beautiful pictures, I showed every card on my Leo video. And we also got the Arcana of Astrology. So this one has all of the different houses and the planets as well as the signs. So for my Capricorns at the end, we're going to do the card that's associated with Capricorn. We're going to read that one just for you. And I want to thank my Capricorns for being the one of the highest, um, most amount of likes and subscribes from any of my other ones. Um, so, and as well as comments. Thank you so much, Capricorn. We appreciate it. And let's see if we can't get you a good reading going here. So, oh. I missed two cards. There's, you know, I've got a skeeter trying to get me again. Hey, get off my cards, skeeter. Get. Get. Alright. Oof. You tried to get me. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at the Mystical Shaman Oracle for my Capricorns. What has been plaguing you, Capricorn? What can we do to change it? This is in your past and your present. All right, one jumped out. We've got the the wind. That's what was in your past. For your present, we've got the vision quest. All right. All right. So, for your angel cards, we're going to do the, um, we're going to pull one angel card. These are kind of wordy in the book, and I do like to read it from the book since uh, I'm not really that familiar with I, I do know quite a bit about the angels of the Bible and the angels of the Apocrypha but these angels are not all familiar to me some of them I have never ever heard of and I actually have an angel deck that I made myself that is about this thick and um, <clears throat> so yeah all right, and also, um, we've got the Tarot Illuminati deck and the Angel Kindness cards for anyone who would like to subscribe to my Patreon page. Those will be, um, someone will be entered to win those. All right, so let's pull one here. We've got Haniel. All right, Haniel. And we're going to pull one card that's from the planets and the houses um, for your future. So my readings have been getting ever more darker and darker. So I've got some light coming your way. I'm going to bring some positive vibes. Everybody's had a long, hard 2020, and the beginning of 2021 has been pretty rough, too. So let's um, see what we can do about that. All right, I'm going to cut the cards, and for my Capricorns, we've got Pluto. All right, Pluto is associated with, I want to say Scorpio. Yes, Scorpio. I desire a fixed water sign. 
All right. <clears throat> so let's take a moment here to read the wind card, which is number 63, in case that has any meaning for you. All right, the wind. <clears throat> this might be slightly, well, I was going to say associated with males, but it's got a woman right on the front. But the card before this is the wind woman. So let's see what the essence says. The symbol of the wind represents the element of air. It rules communication through song and inspired ideas. It also signifies change with qualities both positive and negative. The wind blows from each of the four directions. These are the different qualities bestowed by each. The South carries a new sense of trust, helping you gently begin to discard habits and parts of you that are no longer needed. West, calling you for more introspection and willingness to make final decisions, to let go of attachments, egos, and ego desires. The North Wind is moving to bring you wisdom and strength. And the East is carrying clarity of vision and purpose. Whichever, the, whichever way the wind is blowing for you, the message of the wind whispers or shouts. It is a challenge and it may take courage at first to turn and face the wind. But you will find exaltation in moving forward. And it is... And it is receiving it in its lessons. When the spirit of the wind comes calling, it's a sign of change. Perhaps you need to change your mind about something. Perhaps an old way of doing things has become automatic. And now you've gained greater clarity and can make a new choice. Regardless of what change is, you can expect to be understood and have clear communications with others. At this time, ideas are solid and the shift that is being called for is in the highest good of all. All right. So that's the wind card. And then you have the vision quest, which this actually reminds me of like a video game or something a little bit. Let's see what it says. All right, it's just a few cards behind this uh, in the book. So it says, in the, the essence of the card is, in this vision, you face your fear, embrace your mortality, and meet face-to-face -face with spirit. Okay, that's kind of scary, okay? I don't know. I don't know what kind of spirit you're going to be meeting up with, but watch out, Okay. It says, when we feel stagnant, a vision quest brings our lives into perspective. We realize our flaws and our potential and the opportunities that life is now offering. We remain on a vision, on a vision quest until we find our key to open the new door and write a new chapter in our lives. The invitation, find clarity by spending time alone in nature. If you live in a city, go for a walk in the park. If you live in the country, make sure that you spend time outside in contemplation. Get off the couch, get away from your desk, go outside. Spirit helps those who help themselves. So, set your intention and ask nature for a guiding vision for your life. All right. And most of the Capricorns that I know are very, I, I think that I can't even think of very many Capricorns I haven't been on a hike with. <laughs> okay. So definitely get in touch with nature. It will help you see your vision. All right. Let's read about Hanael. What a beautiful card. <clears throat> this one is number eight, if that has any resonance with you. For me, it definitely does. This card um, represents passion and poise. Haniel's name means glory of God. 
grace of God, and she can help you ignite the passions to bring your renewed energy and vitality. If your world is feeling a little lackluster, call on this super motivational angel to restore your vigorous to restore your vigor and reignite your passion for life. She helps us to channel our energies into things that we love. Strongly aligned with the moon, Haniel is also the archangel of intuition and like the image of her as an elegant Japanese woman in this card, she has a strong feminine quality. She is particularly aligned with healers and psychics and helps us to grow helps us to go with the flow rather than oh let me see here y'all I can't follow this it's she she urges us to go with the flow all right y'all sorry I lost my place Haniel urges us to go to follow in our guidance and we can do what makes our hearts sing rather than what we feel obligated to do. And even if we find ourselves in an unsatisfactory situation, she helps us to act with poise and charm. Haniel can help you enter the peaceful garden of your heart and cross the bridge to whatever your soul is truly hankering for. She can also ignite passion within your love relationships, helping you to connect your sensuality and bring int intimacy into your love life. The message for Haniel is, the spark of vitality within you is being restored, giving you the courage to express yourself with real grace. Whatever you do, do it from the heart with great passion. Alright, that is beautiful. Okay, how to meet Hannah L. Alright, it says, close your eyes. Call upon Hannah L to awaken the passion within you. Imagine her standing over you, holding a giant Olympic torch of magenta flames. She leans down and touches this fiery torch to your heart, and she feels the warmth spread over you around you until you begin to tingle all over with the newfound excitement that your untapped potential is waking is awakening set the intention now that life will be more uplifting and exciting for you and you will have more energy and vitality grace and poise the diamond fire alchemy song of the heart all right, so this is quite long. We're going to skip that part. Um, we'll have to... I might have to do a whole other reading for this angel cards because they are extremely wordy. But there you go. Beautiful, beautiful reading. And let's take a moment to read the Capricorn card. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Capricorn. Capricorn. All right, so let's check out let's check out the Arcana of Astrology and read the Capricorn card. Okay, Capricorn, here we go. Planetary ruler Saturn, the tenth house. The opposing zodiac is Cancer. Alright, so that's someone who is probably not going to be the best match for you. But if you do find yourself in a relationship with a Cancer, then it's probably going to be like an opposites attract type of relationship. Alright, symbols are black stones and minerals, wood and fresh paper. In astrology, the tenth sign of the zodiac is Capricorn, and she is focused on success respect and power she is often depicted as a callous and opportunistic person and while those who while those behaviors can manifest in her darkest forms she is actually a very caring and 
can be seen encouraging those around her to triumph. In the natal chart, Capricorn shows us where we are cautiously ambitious. We have an urge to succeed, but will we make sure that it's through the proper planning and slow, steady steps? It is possible that Capricorn's underlying drive comes from a place of insecurity. So the part of our chart that can also show where we felt inadequate as a child. Okay, in your reading, Capricorn often appears when we are under a lot of pressure to succeed, and this can cast more serious shadows on our personality. This energy can effectively channel into anything that we want. So grab a pen and a paper and outline the steps to reaching your goal. Be realistic, but remember that believing in yourself is the most important part of the process. If you have been pushing hard and not seeing any progress, it may be time to take a step back. Evaluate your process. Maybe you need to change your routine as or assign certain tasks to specific days when you know that you will get your un you, when you know that they will get your undivided attention. Don't worry. You will get to where you want to be. All right. So I highly, um, I highly agree with this. Uh, this is the Capricorn is um, the goat or the sea goat, which is quite a funny picture. And one more card. We're going to read Pluto for you. Now Capricorn, this is Scorpio, the card associated with Scorpio or the planet associ uh, associated with Scorpio. And I happen to know quite a bit about this water sign, so let's see what it says. <clears throat> Saturn. Pluto. Okay. So we've got quite a bit of information here. We're ro running low on time. So let's take a look. We've got the astrological um, signs, uh, the eighth house, the element of water, symbol is bats, bones, graveyards, dogs, cypress, and ivy. In astrology, the last of the outer planets and the farthest from the sun is Pluto. Despite his downgrade by the world's ass, by his by the astronomers, he remains a powerful figure in the astrology. I love how this is like brand new and it's uh, up to date. Uh, so this is 2021. This book was published in 2021. So it's not um, out of date. I love that. When you wouldn't think that something tied to death would also have regenerating qualities. But one cannot exist without the other. It is a cycle, degeneration and regeneration. The changes that Pluto puts in motion are not small, day-to-day -day ones, or they are, they are very large scale. They are massive changes initiated by Pluto, like wars, personal changes initiated by him, like the death of a loved one. What is important to remember is that after the war, we rebuild our societies. We honor our ancestors and, like always, we create new lives. His placement in our natal chart often indicates how you handle these situations. Do you have an understanding of your mortality and embrace its inevitability? Or do you close your eyes and go through life in denial? Pluto's transits uncover the truth. He lifts the veil to the underworld and gives us a glimpse into the past, which can prepare us for the future. We just need to work out how to use this gift. In a reading, okay, so um, let me readjust here because my elbow is hurting. All right, so Pluto in a reading points to a big change. Coming your way, 
This is likely to be an ending of some sort. This will feel like the sudden event, but if you look deep enough into your psyche, you'll see that this was in the works for some time. The death needs to happen to make room for new life. The initiation of a new cycle is painful, but fighting it will just drag those feelings out. So, if you have been waiting for a big ending or some type of monumentous change to take place, know that it will be arriving shortly. Sometimes the anticipation of knowing that something out of your control is about to happen is almost worse than the actual event. Freedom from old structures and anxiety is a relief and it is in that moment that you can begin to rebuild. The key words, death, rebirth, resurrection, change, destruction, occult, ghosts, and the underworld. So this is associated with Scorpio and death and rebirth. And I feel very strongly that, um, you know, you have to take some time to really, um, you know, allow yourself to feel the pain that you have experienced. If you don't do that, then you're not going to get the closure that you need in order to move forward. All right. So make sure that whatever you're going through, no matter how difficult it is or it might seem, it's important to make sure that you're that you're thinking about what what it is that has happened so that you don't find yourself caught off guard. All right, so that's it for this week's reading and um sorry my old chair is so creaky, but um yeah, definitely this is associated with the death card in tarot and it can it can be overwhelming especially if you've had to go to a funeral or something recently so or even the death of a long-term relationship or um anything like that this is going to be something that you're you're not really going to be able to deal with it until you know it comes to you it's it's just gonna one day it's just going to hit you like a ton of bricks and then after that try not to fight it just let it come out if you're if you're upset let your emotions out okay and that's my best advice to you, Capricorn, and I hope that it helps and you all have a wonderful night. Be sure to like, subscribe, and go to my Patreon and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to enter to win this Tarot Illuminati or the Angel Kindness cards. I'm going to be setting that up for you there. And thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate all the likes and comments, Capricorn. Please keep on... Click in the bell. Thank you. Good night.